CCTV Camera World is proud to provide support for products purchased from our website. If you purchased your product from another vendor, please contact the vendor you purchased from for further assistance. I'll be showing you how to use our turret dome cameras when you take them out of the box. So I'll be doing an unboxing and also giving you a brief overview of how to go in and install the camera. I'm not going to be actually installing it. I'm just going to give you some tips on how to use the turret dome camera. So when you open the box, you get everything you see here. And then the remainder is some styrofoam that covers the top of the dome so it doesn't get scratched during shipping, plastic bag, and a FCC conformity statement, and some more styrofoam. So if you're returning something to us, make sure you're sending all of this back as well. Otherwise, there will be a restocking fee. Now, once you've opened the contents and have them on a table, this is what you should have. A camera, a weather grommet, screws. These are not masonry. They're only good for wood. And then we've got a insert to, um, it's a sticker to help you drill proper pilot screw holes so you can put in your anchors or just where to screw in. Now look, let's look at the camera itself. We have the turret and then there's a pigtail coming out of it, roughly about, I think, eight to 10 inches or maybe even a foot, okay. On there, there are two connectors. This is a 12 volt DC. In most cases, you'll never use this, but please don't cut it off and uh, doing so will avoid your warranty. So please do not cut off any connections. Here is the RJ45 connection. It has some pins in there and it's important to protect this from the elements and that as well. So it's good if you're using this outdoors, you use a junction box or a wall mount that's made for this dome. And uh, if you're just hanging this pigtail like that out of the camera and it's indoors, you should still use the weather grommets that come inside the box. We have a video separately on how to use these Basically, an unthreaded Cat5e cable goes through one side of this, then you terminate it, and then you plug it in here. But I believe it has to be an unterminated cable because it has to fit through this uh, rubber gasket there. So very good for weather protection. You, mo you can use it outdoors, but it's not the best. If you do plan to use it outside, after you make the connection, make sure you also wrap it with some sort of electrical tape or other uh, tape covering or even some type of flex seal that'll work as well. But uh, definitely need this. This is, this is for weatherproofing. Even indoors, if you're using a moisture rich environment, uh, definitely gotta use this. Again, just for wood, no masonry, no metal. Now let's talk about the camera. On the bottom of the camera, there's actually a base and it's this whole plastic base that has screw mounts that conform to that sticker there. So you want to take the base off. Usually it's screwed in. So there's a set screw there. You need to unscrew that with a Phillips head screwdriver. Please don't use a drill. Doing so will strip that head and make that camera unusable. We do not have replacements for this. We cannot fix it. If you mess that up, mess that up unfortunately it's unfixable. You probably need a new camera. So unscrew this first. It might be really tight. So when you're unscrewing this, for you to understand what's happening is there's a screw that's going through this plastic. So as you unscrew this, you're going through um, this plastic base here. It's a very hard plastic and it's going into the second plastic mounting bracket. As I unscrew it, this plastic, plastic mounting bracket will become free. And then you can actually pop it out. It'll move to the front. Okay, I use this tab to unlock it. The tab locks the camera in place and then you screw it down when you're mounting it. Press the tab and it comes out. So if you're doing it like, if you're holding the camera so, you have it mounted somewhere and you wanna take it off after you remove that set screw, press down the tab, it unlocks, you move the camera back. Again, tab down, camera back, comes off. Pigtail goes through the mounting bracket. If you look at this sticker, it says there's a cable tray. There's a front and that. The, this notch, this tab is your front. When you line it up, one screw. There you go. One, two, three. This is the cable tray. 
that actually faintly says writing on there too. So that matches it. So when you're mounting these cameras and you're not using a junction box and you're just screwing these onto the wall, use the sticker as a easy template to go out and make your pilot holes. Again, when you're working with cameras, if you use a drill to make pilot holes into your substrate, but you do not use a drill on the screws. Those screws that I just showed you before, they're not meant for using a drill. You make your pilot hole, you put your anchor, or if you're just using a screw directly, you gotta use a hand-driven screwdriver. This is a hand-driven screwdriver. No electronic screwdrivers of any kind. Again, going back, set screw as well. No drill, no electric screwdriver. It'll strip it. So make your pilot holes and affix this template where you want it to be. So if you're mounting the camera facing down, this is what it would look like. I, I would drill this in and then I'll put my camera on top. So when you're threading it through, imagine if you have a wall in the back, you gotta make about a three, four inch hole in there so you can thread your cable through. You would bring your cable through. To demonstrate, you would have your cable coming through the wall. You would have about a three fourth inch screw right there on the wall. Bring your cable through the wall. Screw this in to the wall or other medium. Connect this directly. And if you're putting the RJ45 connection inside a wall, then you really don't need to use the uh, weather grommet. But again, if, when you do use it, then keep in mind, you've got to follow the video on how to use the weather grommet. But again, similar scenario for waterproof connections, you get, you'll have your weather grommet and closing this whole connection. Pigtail goes through here. Camera comes and sits on top. Okay. And then you make sure your notch is lining up with the tab and sit it like so with the notch appearing a little bit like that. Push the camera down or forward, depending on how you're looking at it. It locks in. And then you basically point the camera the way you want it to. It has a lot of freedom of movement. So you can move it right and left. It's kind of slow because I have not completely removed my set screw. If you were to do that, it would loosen up the whole camera. Now you don't want to pull the camera out of its shell here. It's just going to make things more difficult for you. So here you point the camera where you want it to. And let's say you're on a wall, never point the camera parallel with the horizon because sun will burn your sensor. Always tilt it down at least 45 degrees. So if you were on a wall, it would be facing kind of like this. Okay. And then you would go and screw in your set screw to lock it all up. Once that's done, now your camera's in place. And it's very hard to move it. It's still movable though. For example, you can turn the collar left or right. So this is not vandal resistant in that case. That's why you should mount it high enough so that people can't reach, reach it. So no matter how, you can't tighten it any further. There's still gonna be some movement on the dome. So just make note of that. So mount the camera at least eight feet high or so so that people cannot reach the camera and change the direction that it's looking at. That's pretty much it. That's how you mount a turret dome camera. Hopefully you understand how the casing works, how this little base works, and uh, you found the video useful. Thanks for watching. If you're watching on YouTube, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe.